There are about 125 types of engines produced worldwide, but all of them pale in comparison next to SpaceX's latest advanced rocket engine, the Raptor engine. But more importantly, a variant of this super powerful engine called the Raptor Vacuum has somehow become an almost unimaginable engineering marvel. Let's explore this engine in SpaceX's latest test on today's edition of Alpha Tech. So over the past weekend, we all saw this explosive static fire test of Ship 30. However, what was even cooler was that thanks to the new test infrastructure, for the first time, close-up videos underneath the engines were released with such authenticity. Six engines were ignited in sequence, starting with the three outer vacuum engines, followed by the three inner sea level Raptor engines. But what we're most interested in is likely the operation of Raptor's vacuum. The reason for this is the Raptor vacuum engines are different from the sea level engines. While sea level engines are designed to operate efficiently at sea level and can be accurately tested on the ground, Raptor vacuums are designed for use in the vacuum of space. These engines will play a crucial role in taking our Starship spacecraft to nearby planets in space without any problems. To visualize this more clearly, we can also mention the test of reigniting the Raptor engines in space that SpaceX has skipped twice for Starship. This test could help the company determine whether the space engines can restart in the extremely cold conditions caused by extended time in space. Of course, they've successfully conducted similar tests with Raptor vacuum in simulated vacuum environments at their test facilities but it certainly wouldn't be as valuable as doing it in reality. With Starship's upcoming fifth launch, I believe that in addition to catching Super Heavy with the launch tower, SpaceX will also perform the task of reigniting the engines in space. With a separate video of the Raptor vacuum engine test posted by SpaceX in early April, we have a more stunning view of the beauty and power of this beast of an engine. In the video, the engine's in the process of shutting down with a magnificent blue exhaust plume, and we can see vortices forming and moving inside the nozzle as the engines throttle down. These vortices occur due to a phenomenon known as flow separation. Flow separation happens when atmospheric pressure compresses the exhaust gases as they exit the engine nozzle. As the engine throttles down, the exhaust pressure decreases and the surrounding air begins to take over, pressing into the nozzle and creating oscillations and vortices in the exhaust flow. To prevent these oscillations from damaging the engine during testing at sea level, Raptor's vacuum engine is always equipped with a support ring near the end of its large nozzle extension. It's incredible to witness how much happens in such a short time when the engine is running, or rather, when it's shutting down, as in this case. The entire shutdown process takes just over a second, but who would have thought that something as simple as shutting down an engine could be this fascinating? So drop us a heart in the comment if you're liking this video, and please like and subscribe to our channel. All right, not only that, the attraction also lies in the sheer size and inherent power of this engine. Have a look at this previously released photo of SpaceX. Raptor vacuum is gargantuan. The enhanced size is primarily attributed to the significant expansion of the engine's nozzle. The wide nozzle of the Raptor vac engine results in an area ratio of 200, necessitating a nozzle diameter of approximately 4 meters. This enlargement of the nozzle positively impacts operational efficiency in the vacuum of space. Due to its characteristics in a vacuum environment, Raptor vacuum engine boasts an impressive thrust of 357 tons, with a specific impulse hitting a remarkable 380S. This specific impulse measurement surpasses that of many renowned rocket engines, including the vacuum version of the BE-4, and that has a specific impulse of 339S, the RD-180 has got an impulse of 338S in a vacuum, and even the legendary RS-25 space shuttle engine with a specific impulse of 452S, but featuring two combustion chambers. But why do we compare specific impulses between these vacuum engines? Specific impulse means how efficiently a rocket expels its propellant. It quantifies the rate of thrust generated by expelling propellant from the nozzle and is measured in seconds. A higher specific impulse implies a greater expulsion velocity of the propellant. This metric serves as a measure of engine quality, essentially reflecting how quickly the engine burns fuel to propel the rocket upwards. This is the most crucial key performance indicator of a rocket engine, as a faster and more efficient burn rate can accelerate the rocket to higher altitudes and velocities with less fuel consumption. Additionally, the specific impulse for vacuum engines always exceeds that of sea-level engines.
In a vacuum, there is no atmosphere to provide pushback against the expelled gas, unlike at sea level, where the ambient atmosphere contributes to thrust. For instance, SpaceX's current Falcon 9 launch has employed the Merlin engine, which exhibits a specific impulse of 282S at sea level and approximately 311 in a vacuum environment. Therefore, it's only natural for the Raptor vacuum to possess greater power compared to its sea level counterparts. Honestly, the future iterations of the Raptor vacuum engine are likely to be even more potent, possibly up to 400S. So impressive of a figure among all rocket engine lines. That's because SpaceX's engine development is progressing at an amazing rate, exemplified by Raptor 3, which boasts a staggering 17% increase in power compared to Raptor 2. I cannot wait to witness this. It's going to be awesome. Not only outperforming other rockets, but Raptor Vacuum Engine is also a huge milestone in SpaceX's pursuit of advanced propulsion technology. This innovative vacuum engine variant builds upon the foundation of its predecessors, incorporating distinctive features that cater to the demands of space travel. At the heart of the RAPVAC prototype is its ingenious regenerative cooling system. Unlike conventional cooling methods, regenerative cooling involves circulating propellant such as methane through the walls of the engine's nozzle and combustion chamber. This process effectively absorbs the extreme heat generated during combustion, preventing overheating and structural damage. The regenerative cooling system enhances the engine's endurance and longevity, enabling it to withstand the rigorous conditions of space travel. The manufacturing process of RAPVAC's nozzle is quite remarkable. Crafting regeneratively cooled nozzles traditionally involved labor-intensive methods, like assembling thousands of individual pipes. However, the RAPVAC engine takes a novel approach. This nozzle is meticulously crafted from a copper sheet. Copper sheet is then enveloped by Inconel sheets, creating a sturdy and efficient channel wall. This manufacturing technique streamlines the production process and contributes to the engine's overall efficiency. In its pursuit of optimal performance and durability, RAPVAC engine boasts additional reinforcements and protective elements. These components are strategically incorporated to enhance the engine's structural integrity and mitigate potential challenges. Notably, the interior of the engine features a white ceramic material believed to reflect heat and safeguard the chamber wall against oxidation. Additionally, the design of vacuum engines is also given careful consideration to maximize efficiency. The first factor that needs attention is the expansion ratio, which holds paramount importance in vacuum engines. This ratio, which represents the ratio of the cross-sectional area of the engine's exhaust nozzle at the throat to the area at the exit, plays a pivotal role in determining the engine's overall performance. A higher expansion ratio leads to enhanced efficiency by enabling the engine to extract more energy from the expanding exhaust gases as they propel the spacecraft forward. However, as engines venture into the realm of larger nozzles, a complex challenge arises in the flow separation phenomenon. Flow separation occurs when the pressure of the exhaust gases drops significantly, leading to the atmosphere exerting pressure back into the nozzle. This phenomenon can result in adverse effects on engine stability and thrust efficiency. Large nozzles are particularly susceptible to flow separation due to the decreased pressure of the exhaust gases in the vacuum of space. This is a video that shows the main engine of the space shuttle running at full power. Before hitting max thrust, you can see the exhaust flow spreading around the nozzle's tip, then gradually increasing, similar to an accelerating vehicle. Additionally, you can observe the nozzle oscillating more as this phenomenon becomes more pronounced towards the rear. This phenomenon generates significant lateral forces, which, if sustained, could potentially damage the engine. Yikes! Addressing the challenges posed by flow separation in large nozzles is vital for optimizing engine efficiency and stability. Engineers must carefully balance expansion ratios and nozzle sizes to mitigate the adverse effects of flow separation. Through meticulous design and advanced simulations, they strive to achieve a harmonious flow of exhaust gases that maximizes thrust while minimizing flow separation. Besides, the quest for an optimized RAPVAC engine also entails adjustments beyond the nozzle. The engine's power head, the heart of its intricate machinery, might need re-engineering to accommodate changes in flow rates and pressure. Furthermore, the intricate dance between propellant pump config demands meticulous synchronization to ensure optimal thrust production without compromising combustion efficiency. These changes, while challenging, could unlock the engine's full potential and set new benchmarks for space propulsion. In general, SpaceX's Raptor vacuum is a mysterious beast in space, and as Elon keeps on tweaking and upgrading those Raptors, 
Raptor Vacuum will also benefit from his genius solution. This opens up many possibilities for SpaceX and the future of space exploration. NASA signed a $2.89 billion contract with SpaceX to develop the human landing system for Artemis III that's expected to take astronauts to the moon in 2026. Plus, there is a separate $1.15 billion contract signed last year for Artemis IV, and that's projected to happen in 2029. Raptor engine in general and the Raptor vacuum engine in particular will play a huge role in powering Starship during its ascent and descent from the lunar surface. Looking beyond the moon, SpaceX has its sights set on Mars. The company's long-term vision is to establish a self-sustaining city on the red planet, and Raptor engine's the main driver behind this ambitious goal. The engine's ability to use methane as fuel, which can be produced from Martian resources, especially makes it suitable for extended missions and in-situation resource utilizations. Beyond crewed missions, the Starship and Super Heavy vehicles powered by Raptors also have the potential to revolutionize the launch industry. The fully reusable design and rapid turnaround capability of the system could significantly cut the cost of access to space, making it more affordable for a wide range of payload including satellites, space telescopes, and interplanetary probes. SpaceX is also exploring the possibility of using Starship for point-to-point -point transportation on Earth. By leveraging the vehicle's ability to perform suborbital flights, the company envisions a future where passengers could travel between distant cities in just a matter of minutes. Yes, please. While this application is still in the conceptual stage, the performance and reliability of the Raptor engine will be key to turning this vision into a reality. That's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.